Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to discover how a bond or a molecule can be polar. In the last video we saw that different elements have got different electronegativities. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract the pair of electrons on a covalent bond. We saw that the most electronegative elements were at the top right of the periodic table. I'm showing you here the chlorine molecule Cl2 and the hydrogen chloride molecule HCl. Looking at the chlorine molecule we can see that both atoms in this molecule are chlorine, so both have the same electronegativity. Because of this, the electron pair in the covalent bond lies midway between the two nuclei, and scientists call this a pure covalent bond. However, in the case of hydrogen chloride, the electron pair is much closer to the chlorine atom than the hydrogen atom, and that's because chlorine has a greater electronegativity than hydrogen. Scientists call the separation of charge a dipole, and the covalent bond in hydrogen chloride is described as a polar covalent bond. The covalent bond in the chlorine molecule has no dipole, so this is an example of a pure covalent bond. Now, there are two ways to show that a bond is polar. The first way is to write delta positive and delta negative to show the charges. Delta means that the charge is small, and that's because the electron pair has only shifted towards the more electronegative atom. The delta negative sign will go on the more electronegative element. The other way to show bond polarity is to draw an arrow like this, and the arrow points towards the more electronegative element. Now because hydrogen chloride only has one bond, and that bond is polar, this means that the hydrogen chloride molecule has an overall polarity. Scientists call this overall polarity the dipole moment. But what about molecules with more than one bond? I'm showing you here the molecule carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has two carbon to oxygen double bonds, and both of these bonds are polar. However, these bonds point in opposite directions in a straight line, so that means that the dipoles cancel each other out. Because of this, a carbon dioxide molecule has got no overall polarity. We can see the same idea with this molecule. This is called tetrachloromethane. This molecule has four carbon to chlorine bonds which are polar. However, the molecule is symmetrical in all directions, so these dipoles cancel each other out and this means that this molecule is nonpolar. This molecule is called trichloromethane. The carbon to hydrogen bond is effectively nonpolar, as carbon and hydrogen have got very similar electronegativities. In this case, the dipoles on the carbon to chlorine bonds cannot cancel, so this is a polar molecule. The side with the hydrogen is positive, and the side with the chlorines is negative. OK, this shows a water molecule. Water contains two hydrogen atoms, bonded to one oxygen, and these bonds are polar. The water molecule has a non-linear shape, so this means that although these two bonds point in opposite directions, they are not acting in a straight line. Because of this, the bond polarities cannot cancel, and this makes water a polar molecule. In the next video, we'll start looking at intermolecular forces.